Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Man to Man Colors podcast. I'm your host, Taryn, and I'm here today with my good friend and co host, Mason. What's up, guys? And today, we're doing the long awaited Super Bowl preview episode. But before we get into that, uh, Mason, how are you uh, doing today? Doing pretty good. Been a very chill week for me. How about you? Pretty good. I mean, my stats class kind of sucks. So it's like, <laughs> it's office, but oh well. Also, <laughs> last week you uh, showed off some football merch, but today I have a new Pop Funko. This time it's a quarterback who's actually good. And this time <laughs> <laughs> it is Lamar Jackson. So I got Lamar having unboxed it, but. Yeah, what comes with that helmet? That's cool. Yeah, he's in his throwing things. So, anyways, we've talked about the Super Bowl. Not realistic. (laughs) (laughs) We've talked about the Super Bowl a bit on this show, but today we'll be going in depth. Um, We both said we are very excited for the game. Uh, Mason, who do you think is going to win? Getting straight to it, Tampa Bay, Kansas City. Who do you have? Um. I personally have the Chiefs. I think it's going to be a close game, though. I don't think any team jumps out to a big lead. I feel like it's going to be a pretty close game, and I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, so, for me, you look at the teams, and I think the one factor that's going to really determine this game is the running the ball. Because both, I feel like, offenses are matched in terms of passing. You have more options with the Bucking with Scotty Miller, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown. Um, and then with the Chiefs, you have Hill and Kelsey. But I think it's going to be whoever can run the ball and really chew up that clock. I think this will be a higher scoring game. Um, and then whoever's backfield would do better with Kansas City of Le'Veon Bell and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Both have been good. Bell's been a bit underwhelming. And then with the Bucks, you have Fournette and Ronald Jones. So uh, that's what it comes down for me. I think Tampa Bay wins it. I think Tom Brady has a comeback at the end. The only thing is, is that Mahomes has done that as well. So what makes you say uh, the Chiefs? What makes me say the Chiefs is looking back at their matchup in the regular season, I, I think it's going to be very hard for the Buccaneers to stop Hill and Kelsey. I feel like they're really going to focus on Hill this time just because of what he did last uh, last time they met. And I, I really feel like Kelsey's going to have a massive game. And honestly, that's my X factor. If, like, Kelsey does good, I think the Chiefs take it. But if the Buccaneers' defense shows up to play Sunday and they're limiting Mahomes' options, I, I have a strong feeling that the Buccaneers will pull it out. But I'm going with my gut feeling that uh, Chiefs will get it done just solely off the fact I think Kelsey's going to have a really big game. And I like what you said about the run game, too, because we've seen an emergence from Leonard Fournette this uh, postseason, and I think he has a chance at being the Super Bowl MVP if uh, the Buccaneers win just because of how good he's been doing. And Chiefs really need to find an identity because they've been giving it to, like, three different running backs. I feel like they should just stick to Clyde, give Le'Veon some carries, and I think – I really like what you said about the run game, but I really think the Chiefs got to figure that their run game out this week. Yeah, Bell has been below expectations. Clyde has been great, but like you said, I don't have an identity. I'm interested to see how Kelsey does because you look at Kelsey, he's a big pass catcher for the Chiefs, but the Bucks have some good linebackers. Mm-hmm. You have second-year player Levon, uh, Devin White and the veteran Levante David. So you have two really great players I'm trying to think how Kelsey did that first game against the Bucs. I know he did pretty well, but, you know, if Todd Bowles with the defensive coach, you know, I just don't see Kelsey being the X factor. If anything for the Chiefs, I could see it being someone more unknown, like a McCall Hardman or like a Byron Pringle. We usually, we usually see them in the Super Bowls. Um, but I just have Tampa Bay. I think that they looked really good. Their defense has played great. I mean, they limited the Packers early on. And then um, they really shut down the Saints. So I think this will be a high-scoring game, but I think Tampa Bay will be able to hold the Chiefs when uh, need be. Um, who, uh, what quarterback uh, do you think is going to have the better game between Mahomes and Brady, between the two legendaries? Um, I'm going to go Mahomes. I think Mahomes has been uh, far better these past couple of games. Brady 
Brady's been forcing a lot of balls lately. Um, that Washington game, he didn't play his best. And then the Packers game, first half, that's just like vintage Tom Brady. Then second half, I don't know what he was doing, throwing some crazy weird passes. And Mahomes, he's just doing Mahomes things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – I think Mahomes is going to have the better game. But, I mean, Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, you never know. This guy could throw 500 yards and five touchdowns Sunday. You just never know. When he threw 500 yards, he lost. But exactly. – uh... <laughs> Why I'm going um, to the Chiefs, baby. <laughs> the thing that also gets me is we talked about the Bucks defense. You also have a lot of other playmakers on there like Shaq Bear, Carlton Davis, John Murphy, Bunting. And I like those young defensive playmakers because they got burnt in the Chiefs game earlier. I mean, Tyreek Hill was just having a field day with the Tampa Bay secondary. But the Buccaneers are well coached. And I feel like round two, you know, these young Bucks defensive backs against this really fast and potent Kansas City offense could keep up. I just don't trust the Chiefs defense to hold up in key moments. Even looking back to last Super Bowl, their defense really didn't play that great. So I don't know if I really trust their defense. So what's kind of your take on Kansas City's defense? Their defense is super inconsistent, in my opinion. One week, like last week against the Bills, they looked phenomenal. But then uh, any other week, they'll look like one of the worst defenses in the league. Um, I, I think the Chiefs, if they want a shot at winning this game, too, they also have to get pressure on Brady all game. Chris Jones and Frank Clark have to come up big because that secondary is lacking. But besides Tyron Matthew and Mike Evans, I feel like he's going to have a really big game. Um, and I think the Chiefs defense, it's, it depends what Chiefs defense you get. If you get the good one, Chiefs have a great chance. If you get the bad one, it's going to be a long day for the Chiefs. Yeah, the Chiefs' defense is interesting. You have people like Tyron Matthew who are good, a bit overrated in my opinion. Matthew is probably one of the better defensive players, but I still don't think he's game-changing, and that's what you need in this game. So uh, what's your score predictions? My score prediction, I'm going with a somewhat high-scoring game. I'm taking the Chiefs 34 to the Buccaneers 31. I think it's going to be a really close game. I'm 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 honestly so excited for this game. Like I know I said previously I wanted to see uh the Chiefs and Packers the most. But I'm kind of I kind of like this matchup a little more just cuz of Baby Gilbert's old goat. I just love that narrative. And I think it's going to like if Mahomes wins this game it's going to do so much for his legacy. I'm so excited. No joke. I um I was about to say 34-31 as well. So <laughs> that's what um, I'll have that. I think this is going to be a fantastic game. Definitely one of the best Super Bowls. Uh, I'm excited for the halftime show of the weekend. Um, you know, I love his song, Blinding Lights. I've listened to it probably 100 times. Not joking. Great song. Um, I think it's awesome how the NFL is, uh, you know, letting some vaccinated healthcare workers attend the game. I'm interested to see how viewing is because most people I've talked to are not watching it. But, again, most of those people are not football fans. So. How do you think the attendance will be for this game in terms of viewing? See, I feel like every every time there's always the people like, oh, I'm not going to watch this game. My team isn't in or some other reasons. But I feel like I feel like for the Super Bowl and the NFL, their their ratings are always super, like, amazing. And they just go up every year. And in my opinion, if I'm a football fan, I am tuning in this game no matter how much. If I hate Mahomes and Brady so much to the core, I am still watching this game just because – it's Brady versus Mahomes, and I, or yeah, Brady versus Mahomes. So I think the view, the viewership is going to be really good, and I really like uh, what you said um, about the vaccinated healthcare workers. I think that was really cool what the NFL did because they've been they've been doing so much this past year, and I think it's really cool that they're inviting so many people to attend the Super Bowl, and that's and those are the people that are going to be watching the game in uh, in person. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's really nice of them, and. I think that some people are just turned off by this game. That's Tom Brady again, and the Chiefs, they already won it. But I could see this game starting off and at halftime it being like 21-13. And then I see the third and fourth quarter being really close, like the end of third, the beginning of fourth. I think this game could come down to the end. I don't see it being boring. I think that the Chiefs' offense is fantastic, but the Buccaneers' defense is great. And, you know, the Chiefs' defense is not the best. So I could see... Either way, but we are excited for the game. Anyways, now with the Super Bowl coming up, we're going to be doing a very uh, fun thing. We're going to be doing 
basically doing a tier list of all of the 2010 Super Bowls and on. Now, the uh, little tier list I have has all of the Super Bowls from the 2000, but I don't really know any of the ones from 2000, from 2009. So let's do a bit of a screen share here. Um, and we'll pull this up. So basically from Packers, Steelers to last year. Hope you all can see. All right, Mason. So Packers, Steelers, Aaron Rodgers, first ring. What tier are you giving it? S, A, B, C, or D? I don't know about you, but I remember watching the Super Bowl, and I feel like it was very forgetful. I don't know why. I just don't. It, it didn't. It wasn't that. I mean, like I feel like it was a close game, but mm-hmm. I mean, it was cool. Aaron Rodgers won, but it just didn't feel like a like a one of the most memorable Super Bowls. So for that, I'm putting it in C. It's not a, the one of the worst Super Bowls, but it's just not memorable. That's what I like base my Super Bowls on. Is it's memorable? And I just really don't remember that Super Bowl. I don't know about you. I I think watch some of the highlights. I'm not watching it. Aaron Rodgers is great. I do agree with you though that there were some missed like there were some missed big plays. Um, you know, Rogers getting his ring is great. I would say, are you okay if we put it in B? Oh yeah. Okay. As long as it's like average, I think that's good. Yeah. It's not horrible. No, it's not. And then I'm trying to find it, but where would you put the second Giants Patriots 2011 one? For me personally. I think this is one of the most underrated Super Bowls of all time. Uh, no one talks about it. I think it's way better than the first Giants-Patriots game because, you know, that game, the helmet catch was great. Oh, Plexico Burris, oh, that's great and all. But I feel like that this game was um, higher scoring. It was still having the big plays. I think Giants-Patriots – round two is easily S or A tier. I would say A tier is good. Um, I'm glad you said that because I completely agree it's A tier. Um, I I remember the Super Bowl so vividly. I just love seeing Eli Manning take down Tom Brady again. And that that Mario, it was the Hakeem Hicks or Mario Manning. I think it was the Mario Manningham sideline catch is one of the most underrated plays of all time. This dude, Eli Manning, threw in the perfect spot. Manningham have one of the craziest sideline catches of all time, and it just set them up for the win. So I really loved that Super Bowl. Yeah, and also um, there's some good defensive plays. Like I think there's like a safety or something. Um, we're not ranking it. I mean, we technically could, but we're, what's your thoughts on the first Giants-Patriots Super Bowl? The first one, I think it was really uh, good, but I like I like how you said the second one was better because I completely agree. I feel like – People overshadow the second one just because the first one had the the most memorable memorable play of all time. This rule was the helmet catch, which is don't get me wrong, fantastic. But pretty much that it was just like a very low scoring game, not much going on, a lot of punts. And the second one, it felt like it was like a revenge game, which is just that just makes the narrative so much better. Is when Tom Brady wants his revenge, but then he ended up not getting it. I just yeah, but the first one was still good in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think this first one, you look at that one drive, yes, it's great. Eli was good. The helmet catch. But the rest of the game, it's a lot of defense, and I don't know. So, anyways, you go to 2012, Ravens, Niners. I think this is S or A tier, not only as a Ravens fan. Was I happy, but, you know, you had Joe Flacco play really good. And Flacco is someone that I think the Ravens moved on at the correct time. But I really like how he had this one game to just win Super Bowl MVP and be this legend in the NFL. Um, No matter how quickly it was, I thought it was still um, a really great moment for him. Uh, You also had Ed Reed and Ray Lewis, their last game as Ravens. He also had the Niners, Colin Kaepernick. This was when he was really big in the NFL, and he played very good. Say what you want about him politically, but he played very great in this game. You had the brother matchups um, with coaches. You had the almost comeback. Uh, Baltimore hung on and won, but the Niners made it close. There's so many legends. You have Ed Reed, Ray. Frank Gore was also in this game. Patrick Willis. So many great players. I honestly think this is S tier. The more I the more I talk about it. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I think it's as tier. Um, if you did the just the first half only, it's probably due to how it was a blowout. But then the Niners started coming back, and I this will be like one of the craziest things to remember is that blackout. I don't know if you remember the blackout happened. The power mm-hmm. was out for 30 minutes, and it kind of like gave the 49ers more time to like come up with a better game plan. And then the game came down to the wire, which was crazy because the Ravens took this uh, huge lead. But I was, I really like seeing uh, Anquan Bolden win a ring. Um, along with Joe Flacco having his best game of his life, basically. And that's a rule was just very, very good. It was. Um, what, what do you think of Joe Flacco? Because a lot of people like, really like to make fun of him. For me, he had a couple good years, and I think they moved on at the correct time with Lamar Jackson. He's not a Hall of Famer, but Ravens Ring of Honor, possibly. No, I think Joe Flacco gets a lot of hate. Um years where he was very good and then I mean he won a Super Bowl and the Super Bowl MVP so I mean he he's a very solid quarterback and I think he's gonna go down as a Ravens legend just for that Super Bowl and I do agree that the Ravens they made the right choice they got Lamar sat him behind Flacco for a couple games and and Lamar the reigns so I think they I think Flacco's legacy in Baltimore is pretty good yeah um and people say it was the defense that carried Baltimore no Flacco made some great plays all right, we go from a great Super Bowl to Seahawks Broncos. <laughs> um, yeah, um, this is D tier for me. Now, listen, I like the Seahawks and seeing the Legion of Boom don- dominate. It was a lot like the 85 Bears. However, this could be one of the best Super Bowls of all time. Hank the Manning and that fantastic offense against the Seahawks defense. It was just a ball out. Almost was a shutout. Um, this game is not interesting at all. I think it's probably the worst Super Bowl. We'll get to some of the other candidates that people have there, but this is easily D tier for me. I think it's one that people don't really talk about that much for good reason. There's, it is kind of, um, you know, just how disruptive Seattle was, but in terms of an entertaining game, it's for me the bottom. Yeah, no, this game was horrible from the start. Um, <laughs> the final score was 43 to 8. Uh, and the eight points from the Broncos was in garbage time, too. So it was just a blow. It was just a shutout for three fourths of the game. Um, yeah, D tier 100%. Um, I mean, I'm happy that Seattle did win the Super Bowl when they did. But I mean, it could have just, I think, been so much better to me. Yeah. <laughs> it really wasn't. Um, Next up, I think you have the balls of all time, Seahawks Patriots 2014. If I'm not mistaken, it is the most viewed event um, in American TV history, which is super big as someone who wants to go into broadcasting. That is just a fantastic mark, and it's a great game. You look at the, oh, the Malcolm Butler interceptions and all that, but I think it's way more than that. The whole game was really close. Brady made a 10-point comeback. And this is something my friend Ben and I have talked about, is that before 2014, it was 10 years the last time the Patriots won a Super Bowl. They beat the Panthers in 2004, and they hadn't won one since. Before this game, so I was like, can the Seahawks create a new dynasty or the Patriots continue theirs? This is an incredible game. This is what really the NFL is about. Um. I think that this, for me, is probably the best Super Bowl. Um, You know, as an Eagles fan, I want to say Eagles-Patriots, but this game is so legendary. Um, Mason, you can uh, go in and talk about it. Yeah, so I don't like either of these teams, but this is hands (laughs) down the top three Super Bowl, if not the best Super Bowl of all time. Not not only was it a close game to the very end, but it had so many memorable plays. Like the Jermaine uh, Kears catch, curse catch, that was before the Malcolm Butler interception was amazing. It just doesn't get talked about because you probably have the most memorable Super Bowl play of all time, which was uh, Malcolm Butler intercepting um, Russell Wilson and everyone having the biggest what if, uh, what if you just gave it to Marshawn? What if you just ran it on the one yard line, which is still haunts Seattle fans to this day. Um, but no, I completely agree with you. This is, might be the best Super Bowl of all time. And it took place in Arizona. That's always cool. Um, but yeah, I really I agree with everything you said. 
what do you think if Seattle ran it and they won the game? Where do you think – what happens? For me, personally, I don't think we have a dynasty. I think Seahawks win two Super Bowls. 2015, they have some turnover. I don't think that much changes, to be honest. I know that sounds very weird. I just think the Seahawks win the Patriots don't. I think it's as simple as that. Why they didn't run it, I have no idea. But I don't think that much would have changed, being 100% real. I think I think there's only two things that would have changed. One is the final score and who won, which is the Seahawks. <laughs> and I agree with you. And the second thing was, if that that Malcolm Butler play never happened, I don't think Malcolm Butler gets a bag from the Titans. <laughs> um, I don't think he gets paid like he does. I think a lot of he all of his money comes from that one play because he's not a very good player. Um, after that, but yeah, I feel like a lot of it stays the same. Yeah, Malcolm Butler was super hyped up after this game. People kind of forget that, but he was like this big star. And we've seen this in the Super Bowl. If someone plays great. Um, you look at David Tyree with the Giants Patriots round one, Malcolm Butler, and even sadly enough, Nick Foles. You know, after these big Super Bowl moments, they just kind of fade off. So yeah, um, fantastic game. Uh, next up, we go to 2015 Panthers Broncos. I know a lot of people don't like this one. Uh, it has some emotional meaning to me, and I also think you look at Peyton Manning's last game, and it's great. And also, for me, it's like to just see Von Miller being so dominant in this era of the NFL offense. It's so unique. It's just so cool to see him just dominate Cam Newton. There's also a lot of memorable moments. Seahawks Broncos DTO Super Bowl, you say, what are the memorable moments? The safety, that's about it. Panthers Broncos, you can talk about the fumbles and stuff. So I think this is C tier, but if you say D tier, I, I wouldn't blame you. It definitely was not close, but I think it still has some memorable moments, at least in my opinion. No, I'm going C too. Um, Peyton Manning is one of my favorite players of all time, probably top three. Um, and to see him, his last game when it's Super Bowl, especially since he didn't win many in his career. That just made me so happy. And um, it was really – as a Cardinals fan, it was really nice to see uh, Vaughn Miller, um, son Cam Newton, all game after what Cam Newton did to the Cardinals <laughs> two weeks prior. Um, but all jokes aside, no, you're completely right. The Vaughn Miller uh, – what's it called? Uh, sack fumble, that was incredible. And then Cam Newton not diving on the ball, that was a very memorable play to me because – it's just like the Super Bowl, you're 6'5", you're a massive dude, and you don't lay your body on the line during the biggest game of your life. That just, that just speaks volumes to me. I'm going C tier as well. All right, we agree. That game, Cam Newton played really bad. That's probably the worst quarterback Super Bowl performance because so far, 2010, Big Ben played good. Uh, 2011, Brady played good. 2012, Kaepernick played pretty great. 2013, Manny, yeah, okay, he was bad. But look at Cam, uh, and even Wilson was good in 2014. But, you know, but I think this is the worst performance. You have the fumble stuff, and then you have the media stuff, which is just a really oh, – yeah. I was okay for it at the time, but it really doesn't sit well with me. A lot, a lot of people say Cam Newton hasn't been the same since then, but I honestly think he did it to himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I remember watching that media interview like right after the Super Bowl, and I'm like, you just, you, you didn't even dive on the fumble, and then you're you're acting like a big baby. It's just you gotta you gotta take responsibility, especially for your team, in my opinion, in that situation. Yeah, exactly. And then we go to 2016 Patriots Falcons. I remember watching this game, and the Falcons were off to a great start. Um and. Like, okay. And then the second half, the Patriots start coming back. And as soon as they made it 20 to 9, I knew it was over for Atlanta. You know, and I remember I was watching it with my mom and dad, and we were behind about 10 minutes. So we fast forward it, and we were seeing the Patriots come back in like fast forward motion, and New England wins. I remember after that game, just being like, what happened? And the Super Bowl is this huge event. And I honestly think Seahawks Patriots and Patriots Falcons are only two Super Bowls that I've seen where people have talked about them a lot, a lot, like at school, wherever you went, it was everywhere. Um, You know, people talk about, okay, 
the comeback, but the Falcons played great in the first half. So I just think this is one of the most incredible games in the NFL. I think it's S tier. I think Patriots Seahawks is still better because I think that's a better overall game. But I do think this game is better than a Falcon or Ravens and 49ers. So Mason, where do you stand on this one? Yeah, no, this has one of the most memorable moments of all time, which is the 28 to three score with like four minutes left to go in the third quarter. And the fact that Tom Brady was able to lead his team back to not only make it to overtime, but to win in overtime that cemented him as the goat in my personal opinion. Um, 28 to three is absolutely ridiculous to come back from in that late in, in the game. And I don't know if you remember that Edelman catch. There was like three Falcons defenders mm-hmm. on the ball was tipped in the air. He got it. That that was just insane. You have the James White touchdown um, to give them the game. Uh, they ended off in overtime with the James White touchdown. That was incredible. Um, that was Matt Ryan's best year of his career. He, that was his MVP year. I really wanted to see Julio Jones win a ring. It was really sad. It kind of reminded me of uh, 2008 of when Larry was in the Super Bowl. He was playing fantastic, but the Cardinals couldn't pull it out. Kind of reminded me of the Julio situation. But no, I agree with you. This is. Um, very this is s tier um great game overall yeah i do want to mention sorry if you guys can see me looking down my phone i was trying to bring up this tier list on a bigger screen so that i could see what pictures belong to what game but i think we got it uh yeah the julio larry comparisons are definitely there 2017 eagles patriots uh i love this game as an eagles fan so many memories with it um you know i watched it with my mom and dad and they thought the Eagles were going to win. I didn't think so. And a funny story is how I found out about the Philly special because that's the most memorable thing from this game was I looked down at my phone to check something, and I saw the Eagles scored a touchdown. And I clicked on the <laughs> app, and it said Nick Foles passes to Nick Foles or something. I'm like, what the heck happened? <laughs> and then I see it. I'm like, that's incredible. So great play. I do think – it's a bit overhyped. It is probably a top 10 NFL play of all time, yes. But I think it gets a bit too much overhyped. I think that the f- sack fumble Brandon Graham caused on Tom Brady was a lot more impactful. Um, I think this is S-tier. I think that overall it was an offensive game that I was really capturing. I had that emotion of the Eagles being the underdogs. I do think, though, there was not that much defense. I will say it's S tier. I'll put it ahead of Falcons. Oh, my gosh. I'll put it ahead of Ravens and 49ers, but behind Patriots, Falcons. Uh, uh, Mason, do you agree with me there? Yeah, I really like this game because I thought coming in, there's no way that Nick Foles is going to beat Tom Brady. Um, But he proved me wrong, and he put on a show of his life, and – he won Super Bowl MVP. That was just bizarre. I was like, when the Carson Wentz got injured, I'm like, all right, right off the Eagles, they're done. And this dude, Nick Foles, he he carried the torch, and he did fantastic. And the Philly special was a pretty cool play. Um, caught me off guard. I was, like, eating a Five Guys burger. <laughs> I look up, and I'm like, I'm like, what is Nick Foles doing <laughs> up on the offensive line? I'm like, is this dude about a blog? And then I see, and then I snapped it to someone past to Trey Burton. And I'm like, what is going on? And then Nick Fuller scored. I'm like, it's like, what just happened? Like, that was just the most bizarre thing ever, but it worked. So, yeah, that Super Bowl was really cool. And that was one of the – that Super Bowl, like, I don't know why, but that, that's, like, burned the most in my memory just because of how high scoring it was. And, like, Tom Brady broke the passing yards record, and he still didn't win. I mean, that game, no defense, but sometimes that's – that's pretty cool because just high scoring games are always intense, and I really like that game. Yeah, I agree. I think this year's Super Bowl could be the most like this one, in my opinion. Um, Patriots Rams. Oh, this one is so interesting because there's a lot of negative hype going into it. The Saints were robbed. Um, you know the, uh, you know there's a, a whole Chiefs like roughing the pass there with Tom Brady. A lot of people went to Chief Saints. That would have been awesome, yes. Then this game came in. It was a total of 16 points. With that being said, I rewatched highlights of this game a good amount of times. I think, for me, the main thing is, is that there's some great defensive plays. Seeing these two defensive minds, Bill Belichick 
with Wade Phillips and Sean McVay kind of young against the old Bill Belichick. It's great to see games start to get going, and they just never capitalize. And I feel like this game could have gotten really interesting. It didn't. I think it's either between – I think it's between Panthers, Broncos, and Broncos, Seahawks. Uh, it wasn't a blowout. It was competitive. But I think uh, Panthers, Broncos has some more memory. So I'm, I'm putting it in either D or C tier, whatever, whichever you say I'll put it in, Mason. I'm going to go C just based on the fact that it wasn't a blowout like the Seahawks one because at least – I mean, it wasn't a high-scoring game, but at least like the Rams still had a chance to win to the very end. And um, there are some pretty cool plays, like the Gilmore uh, tip pass. That was incredible. Um, And then the Gronkowski. It was like Gronkowski caught a pass over, like, two defenders. That was Mm -hmm. a crazy play. So, yeah, no, it definitely wasn't, like, flashy, but it wasn't a blowout. So, it's definitely a C in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Also, very well called by Tony Romo and Jim Nance. As someone who wants to do sports broadcasting, they made that game interesting. Niners Chiefs. Uh, last year, really like this one. I think it's A tier ahead of Giants Patriots. You had the Mahomes come back. It was a very even game. I feel like all facets of the game were there on both sides. Garoppolo and the Niners offense had some nice plays. The defense got some turnovers. The Chiefs defense played well. They also got some offensive plays. This, this was just a very clean Super Bowl. I don't think it's just like fantastic emotional game like all four of these were, but I would still put it in the likes of a tier in my opinion it was a really fun game and yeah no i i, I agree i like the a uh the a ranking um the super bowl was really cool because my homes and the chiefs were down 20 to 10 with i think it was like 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter something like that and then that eight step drop back where they designed a play for Mahomes to drop back eight steps which is completely unheard of by the way if you guys um, aren't familiar with like quarterback knowledge it means when the quarterback drops back eight steps compared to like the normal three or four so he dropped back double of what the normal uh the normal he does and he launched it to Tyree Kill Tyree Kill of course comes down with it then it sets, sets him up for a touchdown and overall this Super Bowl is uh really it wasn't mem- it wasn't uh emotional like you said but it was entertaining um there was n- there was no point in the game where you thought it was over which is really cool, and uh, I feel like both sides, I feel like both teams played really good. Um, it sucks that the 49ers couldn't get it done, but I think that was a great season for them, and the Chiefs um, getting a Super Bowl win for the first time in 50 years was also really cool to see. Yeah, I agree. It was a lot of uh, fun. Real quick, Mason, before we end it, um, what's just your final thoughts on the Super Bowl this coming Sunday? I think this Super Bowl, if you guys are not planning to tune in, you guys should. This is going to be one of the best quarterback matchups I think we've ever seen in the Super Bowl. Um, a old Tom Brady, but he's still playing at a high level versus one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the league right now, who's on the rise. Them going at it, I think I think it's going to be an S-tier Super Bowl. That's my prediction. Um, at least a, something like that. As long as it's close, I think it's going to be A or S. So I'm I'm super excited for the Super Bowl. Yeah, I am too. Um, what's one underrated player for each team? For me, I could see Scott, Scotty Miller for the Bucks doing well. The Chiefs defense isn't that great. I could see him getting big plays. I think Tampa Bay is going to pass the ball a lot. I think Mike Evans maybe. But I think Scotty Miller could be very good against that Kansas City defense. And then the Chiefs, I could see a running back, whether it be Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Le'Veon Bell gets it on. Tampa Bay has good linebackers, but the Buccaneers' defense is confused a bit. I could see a running back uh, for the Chiefs. Um, two underrated players. I'm going to go both on the defensive side. I'll start with the Chiefs first. I'm going to go uh, Legereus Sneed. He is their cornerback, one or two, I believe. Um, oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a rookie. He is an absolute stud. This guy's a ball hawk. Um, wherever the ball is thrown, this guy is somewhere near it. Um, he's been playing great. I feel like he's a very – not only underrated player in the Super Bowl, but just in the league in general. Um, but he's been playing good. And then for the Buccaneers, going a veteran player who's been in the spotlight before, Jason Pierre-Paul. This dude oh. has been super underrated this year. This guy has been playing fantastic. And I feel like what a lot of people aren't talking about is – the Chiefs do not have their starting left tackle, Eric Fisher, for this game. 
So I feel like Jason Pierre-Paul could have a massive game, and he's been playing very well in the playoffs too. Yeah, that's a good point. And overall, what happens, we'll be here to cover it. Mason, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, check out Mason's podcast, TMS Takes. Pretty fun. Please check it out when you have a chance. It's Mason and some of his friends. So similar in feel to this podcast, but definitely different in a good way. Till then, take care, everyone, and have a good one. See you guys.